Welcome to Outpost Underground, where we equip you with the tech know-how to survive and even thrive in a grid-down world. Alright, today we are kicking off episode 1 of our Grid Down Phone series. If you've got an old Android smartphone laying around, don't toss it out just yet, because we are about to show you how to turn it into a potentially life-saving device for when things go sideways. This episode, we're specifically talking about Kiwix, getting the app, and using the phone to create a tiny file server that other Wi-Fi devices can access. This is the same software that powers the $300 pocket from Gridbase. But did you know that software is completely free and in no way unique to Gridbase? They are literally charging right around $300 for a Raspberry Pi 02W a 512GB micro SD card, a small battery, and the free Kiwix platform. You can see the price breakdown. And all the device can do is run a pre-configured Kiwix server. One you can't really modify. You can't use the hardware for anything else. There's no screen. You can't add new Kiwix ZIM files. And the form factor isn't that great with exposed traces and connections. But, if you want to spend $300 on the convenience of something like the Gridbase Pocket, by all means. But also consider the Acid Mini from Avant Garde Labs. It's a very similar device for almost half the price. Now, alternatively, lots of folks have old Android phones, or we can find them and purchase them relatively cheap. The one I have here is a Moto E4, which was released in 2017. It packs 2 gigabytes of RAM, a quad-core processor, 16 gigs of onboard storage, a micro SD card expandable up to 256 gigs, a decent-sized battery, and a 5-inch touchscreen. Not bad. These are about the minimum specs I would want in this file server. The expandable storage isn't the greatest, but you can pack a lot into 256 gigs, and you can easily find a newer phone that supports much larger micro SD cards. Now, shout out to Reddit user LuckyFishMars for his recent work developing a basic matrix for Kiwix version functionality with older Android devices. This is good info to have on hand for a project like this. In this video, I'm covering the first of two ways we can set up the Android phone with Kiwix. Method 1 is using the Google Play Store to install Kiwix. Method 2 will be downloading the Kiwix application APK file and ZIM files directly from the Kiwix website. Each method has pluses and minuses, which I will talk about. For this project, I started with a clean slate factory reset. This way I've got a fresh, reliable base to build on. On this device, go to Settings, Backup and Reset, Factory Data Reset. You can select the micro SD card if you want. Then Reset Phone and Erase Everything. Once that's done, it's time to set up the basics. There are a lot of custom settings and configurations for these devices, but for this first method, using the Google Play Store, I'm going to leave everything at default. I purchased a new 256GB microSD card for this demonstration and using that to store the ZIM files. Some ZIM files you may want are pretty large, so adding the most additional storage you can afford is worth it. If you have a new micro SD card like I do, I'm going to want to format that for the XFAT file system. Now, just follow along on the screen. I'm going to do this on my Windows computer. I plugged it in. I can see it in my devices and drives on the computer. I right click and make sure I have XFAT file system with default allocation size and hit OK. And we should be formatted and ready to go. So just take that SD card then out of the computer and 
we'll install it in our device. Now that we have formatted our micro SD card, it's time to install it in our phone. You just power off your device, expose the micro SD card slot, insert the card, reassemble the device, and boot it up. On my device, that involves taking off the back plastic cover, removing the battery, and then I can access the micro SD card slot. I just reverse the steps, reassemble the phone, power it up, and we're ready to move on. The procedures for your specific device may be slightly different than this, but you should be able to search the internet and quickly locate a how-to on SD card installation. It really should not be that difficult. Most of these devices are made for easy storage expansion. Now that the micro SD card is installed and the phone is booted up, I am going to log into the Google Play Store and search for Kiwix. It should be pretty simple. There really should not be too many other options that pop up. But as long as you see something that looks just like that, you can select install and it will download that application. It should go pretty fast. And once download is complete, you can open Kiwix. The application will open on your device. It will go through some basic you know, tutorial stuff. And you want to allow Kiwix to access your device information. And once that's done, we will go to settings and we will scroll down look at our storage right now it's set for internal we want to change that to external storage so we can utilize the larger storage on our micro SD card we can then go back to the home page and go over to download and we can browse the available zim files now it's Worth noting, if you're browsing ZIM files and some of the larger ones, over 4 gigabytes, are grayed out, that means your storage is not properly formatted and, like I mentioned, it can't download those large ZIM files. So, everything's okay. Just go through, find some ZIMs, and start downloading what you want. Okay, fast forwarding now. I have completed my downloads, so I'm going to open up the Kiwix application go into my menu in settings and you can see that I have activated night mode it should make recording a little bit easier as well as a little easier on the eyes and scrolling down from there you can see in my storage I have used up a lot of my micro SD card roughly 40 gigabytes of space left so that is a lot of reference material that I have downloaded scrolling down my library you can kind of see what I have selected. It's a lot of just general knowledge and preparedness information. A lot of things that I think would be important or beneficial should I lose access to the internet. And this information is kind of my little uh, acorns that I've scrolled away, you know, for a rainy day. So a lot of cooking information, disaster preparedness, wikis, those sort of things. One of the benefits to using an Android phone for this purpose is I am actually able to view my library from the device. This isn't like using a Raspberry Pi and having to access that database from my other phone or tablet or computer. I can actually browse this material from the device itself. Now, how do we make all of this information available over Wi-Fi to nearby devices? It's actually quite simple. First, in our application for Kiwix, we go to the menu and we see Wi-Fi Hotspot. This will populate a Start Server button. But, we still have Wi-Fi on this device connected to the local network from when we set up the device. So first, we need to go in and turn off the device's Wi-Fi. This will allow the device to become its own hotspot and produce its own Wi-Fi network. So we're back in the application, back in the menu, Wi-Fi hotspot, start server, and we need to actually go in and activate the device's K2 
capability to become a Wi-Fi hotspot. It's very simple. We follow the menu. Here we can see the name of that network. So that is what we will look for once this hotspot is running. And we try to connect to it from a different device. So now that that is done, we can hit that start server button and it will start working and start to initialize that server to create the Wi-Fi hotspot that we can connect to and access this data from any other Wi-Fi device in that vicinity. So the more powerful the device, the newer the device, the quicker the server will start, but it really isn't too bad. And then we see, server started successfully. We do want to make a note of the information displayed at the top of the screen. Now this URL, that's highlighted in blue, is what we need to use a web browser on another device to actually access the Keywix server. With the Wi-Fi server up and running, I'm now going to use my computer to connect to that Wi-Fi network. So I open up the Wi-Fi options. I can see I have a Verizon Moto E4 available. So I hit connect. And this will go through that process of connecting to the Wi-Fi network that's being generated by that Android phone. I did not have a password set. You can configure that if you would like in your options, uh, but it is not required. So this will go through a little bit of a process, but before too long, it will connect and it will say no internet open, which is fine. We know that phone is not actually connected to the internet. It is generating its own Wi-Fi. We will now open a new browser window and navigate to that URL or IP address that was displayed at the top of the screen once the Android phone started the Qx server. And there we have it. Here we can see the homepage for the Qx server that is running on that Android phone. Now this is a lot more responsive than it was browsing on the device itself, basically because the phone is not having to generate all that content on the screen of the device. It is just going through the data on the back end and serving that up to these other devices. Now using my computer or I can use a tablet or another phone or you know, anything with a screen and a Wi-Fi connection, I can browse all of the reference material that I have saved on this device. This is an amazing project. Kiwix is free. All you need is the hardware and you are off to the races. It's amazing. As I mentioned earlier, this is method one of two methods for installing Kiwix onto an Android phone. Using the Google Play Store method, it's easy, but it limits you to downloading ZIM files directly through the app. Now this is fine for everyday use or setting up your device for the future use, but if anything happens to the internet and Qwix is no longer available, you're pretty much stuck with what you have. That application, when downloaded from the Google Play Store, does not allow for the side loading of Zim files. So if you had an offline Zim library, your own library, you could not take those Zim files and load them on your device. You are really stuck with what you have. So method two is going to cover downloading the application APK directly from Kiwix and then using that to load the application on your device and then using your offline Zim library to load the Zim files that you want onto the device. This is an excellent method, especially if you are looking at using this in a grid down offline scenario and you can actually configure multiple devices this way. You aren't just stuck with that one device you pre-configured. You could, in theory, produce these for your community. So stay tuned. Method 2 video is coming out shortly. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe if you found this helpful and we will see you next time.